What's up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk. Something about the underdog. Today, yeah. we have a very special guest on this podcast. A man nicknamed Jeezy on this show. But before we get into this interview, I have to give this gentleman a proper underdog talk introduction. Hailing from Rochester, New York, today's guest is an American professional swimmer and 12-time Olympic medalist. This gentleman is the second most decorated swimmer in Olympic history, measured by total number of medals. He currently holds the world record in the 200-meter individual medley, long and short course. This guest specializes in the backstroke and individual medley. A proud father and husband, a TYR ambassador, I am proud and honored to present Mr. Ryan, we got to do it again, Jeezy Lockley. <laughs> what is up, man? How are you and the family? Oh, we're doing, we're doing good. I just, man, to tell you the truth, I'm stuck in a damn airport right now. Uh, my daughter is turning three, and Happy I had a flight yesterday leaving out of LaGuardia, headed home to be there for my daughter's birthday today. And all the pilots went on strike or something. Like every flight in the airport got canceled. And I'm just like, I'm about to get the damn father of the year award now. Great. Well, like, first not of all, in a good way. Uh, I think you've already been the father of the year. But you know what? If anyone's watching this and they can send a jet over oh. to Ryan, a <laughs> private jet, and we can get Ryan to his family, please, please, please get this going. I'll get. I'll give you swim clinic. I'll give you swim lessons for like a month. <laughs> let's go. And I mean, hey, something about the underdog. Let's make it happen, baby. Now, before we start, Ryan, you know I have to ask why the nickname or where the nickname Jeezy came from. I mean, I don't know. I think it has to go back to when I trademarked Gia, yeah. J E A H. Yeah. Um, and it's the craziest thing how like it became like my word because like one day like we were talking it was a group of us like Michael Phelps like Derek Torres we were all talking and instead of saying yeah like Y E A H I said Gia and they were like wait a minute wait what the heck did you just say Ryan I'm like Gia Gia and then I started using it as like Gia. And like everyone started saying it as well. Oh, and it kind of just stuck with me. I was like, man, I need to trademark this. I, I think it just sounds dope. Yeah. I, I mean, that trademark successful because, yeah, I mean, it just sounds better than, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I love it. Um, now, Ryan, I want to start from the beginning. So yeah. you only began taking swimming seriously when you were in junior high school with your father even saying, I would send him to go shower when he was messing around. He spent more time in the showers than he did in the pool. Oh, yeah. So at 14 years old, you know, you had a loss in the Junior Olympics. And this just yeah. changed your mindset. Um, so, Ryan, is this where you realized that you had some untapped potential um, that wasn't being used? And what changes did you make to your training? Oh, I mean, I didn't think I had the potential to be known as one of the greats. Um, I didn't get that feeling until about my after my freshman year of college. So, um, but like during that junior high moment, um, we had like this high point trophy at the end of the year where my, one of my best friends, like he would always beat me and I'd always get second or third. And one year I was just like, I was really quiet going home. And my dad was like, what's wrong? Usually I'm off the walls, like chitter chatter, like going off the walls. Um, and I was like, I lost. And he's like, well, son, what are you going to do about it? He's like, I'm never going to let that happen again. And then from that moment, I, instead of going to the swim practice just to be there, I was going there with a purpose. I was going there with a goal that I wanted to become one of the best. So instead of having one or two practices that were great, I was starting having weeks together in a bulk that was fantastic. I started training harder. I started um, making more sacrifices. Instead of going to the beach to go surfing, I would go to swim practice. So I started making sacrifices um, and really dedicating my life to the sport of swimming. Uh, but 
I still wasn't that great. <laughs> I was just gradually getting better. I didn't start feeling like I can make a name for myself until after my freshman year of college. And that's where basically that's where it all started. And I mean, fast forward to college, the University of Florida, the yes. big Go Gators guy, um, where you copy me actually and major in sports management. Um, mm -hmm. I'll let that slide. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, you put up some ridiculous, I'm going to say video game numbers here. NCAA Swimmer of the Year twice a seven-time NCAA champion, a seven-time SEC champion, and I just got to add a 24-time All-American all swimmer. I mean, those are video game numbers, right? So I got to <laughs> ask, how big is college swimming in terms of getting your name out there? And then what's, it, what's the importance of college swimming to the Olympics? The college swimming is to the Olympics is nothing. I mean – in college, you're swimming in a 25-yard swimming pool. Uh, half half the meters of a 50-meter. So, like, in the Olympics, you swim in a 50-meter pool, the big pool, the long pool, the one where you have to reach down and grab your cojones and be like, who wants it? Like, that that type of pool. And, I mean, college swimming, I, I loved. Like, I was obsessed with it because my specialty is underwaters. My specialty is underwaters and flip turns. And you in college swimming, your pool shorter, so you can do a lot more of them. So that's what I loved about it. But in all reality, I was like, if I want to make a name for myself, I mean, this is a good foundation, but it doesn't end here. Like, I I want to become one of the world's greatest. And in order to do that, I have to transfer what I've learned and developed in college at the college level, I have to transfer that into an international level. And that's what I started doing on um, training, just long course. And being at University of Florida was the best university to train at because we're, we train not just yards. We train long course, too, as well in the in season. So when I was in college, I was training long course as well, which was perfect because that set me up perfectly for when I did uh, go to swim meets long course and trying to get in that international level. Um, so it was a very easy transition, um, but when it all comes down to it, it's all just like my goals, my goals and purposes that I wanted to um, get out of the sport. Yeah, and I mean, fast forward, you turned into what you dreamed of. Um, I mean, you're a 12 time Olympic gold medalist, sorry, medalist, uh, and as mentioned earlier, the second most decorated swimmer in Olympic history, mm -hmm. measured by number of medals. So I'm not going to lie. You're the first Olympian I've ever talked to. So what is the training actually like to be an Olympian and to be the best of the Olympians? It's grueling, um, especially with swimming, because swimming is one of those sports where you use every muscle of your body. So like for that instance, like if you take two or three days off, it feels like you took a month off, like you are completely out of whack. You're not in sync with the water, like everything is just whacked. So that's why it's so grueling, because you have to stay at it every day. And that, mean, that means there's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make. But I knew what my goals were. I had a purpose of going to the swimming pool. A lot of people like even you, you can go to the swimming pool and practice. Anyone can practice, but I was going to practice with a purpose, with a sheer goal, um, a dream of becoming one of the world's greatest, getting on that um, Olympic um, podium, getting a gold medal and breaking a world record at the same time. That was my dream. And so every time I went to the swimming pool, I had a purpose. So I was I was just a beast mode every time I went to the swimming pool. I left it all at the swimming pool. Um, I lived a two different kind of lifestyle. Um, I was a swimmer. I was Ryan Lochte, the swimmer. And then Ryan Lochte, the, Hey, I'm here to have fun type. Yeah. Um, and I had those two different lifestyles because I put so much energy and commitment into swimming that like when I left, the last thing I wanted to do left the swimming pool. The last thing I wanted to do was talk about swimming. Yeah. 
last thing I wanted to do was think about swimming. So like I lived a two different lifestyle because I put so much energy and commitment into swimming that like I wanted to take a step out. So like me going to the movies or getting a drink with my friends, like that was me escaping swimming because when I came back, I was I was back to that beast mode. So um, I think it was really um, unique how I did that. And it helped because I was able to swim. I'm 37 now and still swimming. So it's pretty awesome. And I mean, I am speaking to one of the best swimmers and one of the best Olympians of all time, Mr. Ryan Lochte. Now, Ryan, what is your biggest advice for someone who's just getting into the sport of swimming? And to add on to that, what is the biggest tip for someone going to their first Olympic Games? Um, oh, with, for someone that's just starting swimming or someone that's getting into the Olympic Games? So, someone, so two questions. Someone that's getting into competitive swimming, what's the okay. biggest tip? And then the second one, what is your biggest tip for someone going to their first Olympic Games? All right, I'll start with the second one. Um, when someone's going into the Olympic Games, embrace it. Like, you're swimming for your, excuse my French, fucking country. How badass is that? You're badass. swimming for your country at the highest stage in sports. Like, you can't beat that. Enjoy it. Embrace that moment and that journey because it will stick with you forever. Um, one of the best things that I thought – when I became an Olympian was I got to wear a United States American flag cap with my name on it. I was like, dude, I think I just won gold right there. Like, look at this. This is, it has my name on it. Like, this is so awesome. I freaking loved it. And just being part of team USA is just like, it's a dream come true. Um, so that's what I would, the advice I'd say for people that just enjoy it and have fun, like embrace it. Like you've done the work. So like, you don't have to be nervous. Like this is just another swimming. It's just called the Olympics. Yeah. Go out there and do what you, how you got there. Dominate, have fun, enjoy swimming. Um, so that was my advice. Um, my advice for like actually swimmers is, you know, I do a lot of talks with like little kids and stuff. I'm like, things that I've learned and developed throughout my swimming career to help the younger generation out, because honestly, it's not about us. It's about the younger generation now. Um, and for me, loving kids, having two of my own, like I want to give back any way I can. So I tell them like three things to listen to your coach. And this can go not just for swimming. Like this can go for if you're a doctor or anything like that. You know, listen to your coach. Your coach has probably been doing for like me. It was like your coach has been being a coach longer than you've been swimming. So they're there to help you. Like actually listen to them. Don't just if they say something like those don't, don't take it in and then forget about it. Like actually think about it. Like I never got yelled at in swimming. When I was at the swimming pool, I never got yelled at because I would listen to what they would say. I would process it and they never had to tell me again. So listen to your coach. The second one is make sure you guys set short-term and long-term goals. Short-term goals. I set short-term goals every day before I jump in that water, whether it's making sure I kick 15 meters underwater every flip turn. Um, those little goals, because those little goals, they're going to add up. And you're going to practice with a strive. A str like you're trying to strive for something great. And then you have that long-term goal. Uh, when I was younger, it was going to the Olympics, getting a gold medal, and breaking a world record at the same time. That was my goal because when you wake up in the morning, you want to have a purpose. You want to have a goal. And that was mine. So every time I went to the swimming pool, anything I did, I had a goal. I had that long-term dream that I, I was striving for something. So you are always having a purpose of going into that swimming pool. And then the third one, the most important one, the probably the one – thing that like I think I did too well was have fun you know what life is too short you have to enjoy life yeah. and for me swimming was enjoying like I was enjoying life so on um, those are like the kind of three things I would say to uh anyone that's getting involved in like you it doesn't even have to be sports it could be anything just listen to those three things and it's helped me and I mean Ryan, wow, that just helped me a lot. I think that's something I needed to hear personally because 
those are three things in my life that I struggle with and, and trying to develop myself to become better. And I think what you said about having fun, yes, you are representing the best country on earth. Yes, you are living your dream and being an Olympian. Um, but at the end of the day, we're here to have fun. This is a moment that you'll never forget. You know, always, you know, that hunger to be the best and win is obviously there. But, you know, be have fun. Enjoy the moments. Enjoy the small things in your life. You yes. know? Um, and then short and long-term goals. Yeah. I mean, that just seeing your vision come clear, you know, it's one of the most successful and satisfying things. Um, so, Ryan, wow. I mean, <laughs> I, again, I, I know I've said it, but I am talking with Ryan Excuse my French. <laughs> I mean, this is the man. And, and normally I say, you know, I know you're busy. No, Ryan is really busy. It is his daughter's third birthday today. <laughs> he is literally delayed. He is on a flight today. I mean, this is the man. Um, so he really is busy. But Ryan, before I get you out of here, yeah. are you down for some rapid fire questions? Oh, shit. Bring it. Come on. Let's go. I like it. I like it. Favorite swim stroke. Favorite swim stroke, backstroke. Oh, I love it. Favorite cheat meal. Pizza and wings. Damn right. Two for two, baby. Best song before a swim. Sky's the Limit by Lil Wayne. It's on his dedication album. I'm going to have to bump that after this. Oh, hey, it is. If you want to get jacked up for like anything, you listen to that. All right. That's the that's underdog talk new anthem, Sky's Limit by our guy, Wheezy. You know, <laughs> I love it. And I don't even know why I included this question, and I think I know it. Yeah or ja? I don't, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. J E A H. Ryan says it the best, so. Ja. Yeah, he said it the best. Next, next question. <laughs> These are the two biggest questions, Ryan, on this yep. show. First one: talk like Rocky Balboa for a year, or box Rocky in his prime. Oh, I would talk like Rocky Balboa for a year. Like getting in a ring with him, that's that's suicide. <laughs> like I've seen those movies multiple times. And bam, he will clear clock you to the next millennium. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yo, Adrian. Right, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cut that 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 phrase. Last question. Now, this is the big one that's the most debated question on this show. Mm -hmm. pull-ups or chin-ups which kind of guy are you ryan i mean for me being a swimmer chin-ups are easier but i choose pull-ups because i don't like anything oh. easy wow i mean i've said this a million times this is ryan lochte one of the best to do it one of the best olympians a true american hero now it's been my biggest honor and privilege having you. I appreciate your Thank time. You. But before we go, is there anything you want to plug where we can find your Instagram, where we can find your training? I know you train uh, yep. you know, children and swimming. Where can we find all this? Um, you can definitely go to any of my handles. Um, it's just at Ryan Lochte. Um, you can go anywhere. You can DM me, ask me questions. Um, if you want swim clinics, anything like that, basically anything. I'm an open book um at ryan lochte um and also before i go i just want to give a shout out to my daughter Liv. she's turning three um oh. I, face I, I facetimed her earlier and i started crying uh that i wasn't there uh it's sad but uh she was in her princess elsa dress that we got her there you go. looking amazing i was like oh this, this i gotta get home i gotta get home, you gotta get home. <laughs> and and i mean good things happen to good people ryan you will be home to enjoy your birthday cake. Sorry, her yes, birthday cake. Yes, yes. Well, 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 let's be honest. It, it, it's it's kind of my birthday it's kind cake. Of your birthday. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Well, happy birthday to her. Uh, you know, Frozen's a great movie, so I can't I can't even argue on that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but from from two, two underdogs, two underdogs out. <laughs>